Make me holy like you That I may do the things you do Make me holy like you That I may ever feel your fight When I saw the headline on the evening of November 6th, quote, Fox News projects Democrats capture House of Representatives, there was a heaviness that settled over me. First, I remembered all those prophecies of a red wave that I knew would never come to pass. Although I believe that in the end, the behavior of the left is finally going to come home to roost for them. I hope, I sincerely hope, that those who prophesied wrongly of a red tsunami in this midterm election will now have the grace and the humility to publicly admit error and apologize. With the loss of the House of Representatives, I believe there will now be trouble, there'll be turmoil, there'll be paralysis in Washington and for the nation. For two years, I've been calling for prayer for President Trump, saying that if he would not learn that you can't win by insulting enemies and calling them names, then there would be losses. I have grieved over the fact that for two years, many fellow Christians, genuine believers, have argued with me to justify the president's tone as if it were a good and needed thing to denigrate and dishonor and insult others. Why didn't we understand the scriptures in the heart of our Lord? Proverbs 12, 18, There is one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Or, Proverbs 16, 7, When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So I lay the responsibility for Republican losses in the House of Representatives squarely, squarely on the shoulders of both President Donald Trump and those of us who identify as evangelical Christians. You cannot win friends. You cannot influence enemies. You cannot win them to your point of view by insulting people and calling them names. For a number of years now, I have pled prophetically, Christians, change your tone. We're commanded, Jesus commands, Scripture commands us to overcome evil with good to bless our enemies, not attack them. And when we do that, we heap burning coals upon their heads. Scripture says, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you'll heap burning coals on his head. That's Romans 12, 20. Well, in the, that, that doesn't mean that you're going you're gonna to burn a hole in his head. In the ancient Near East, where wood might be scarce, one man in the village would keep a fire burning at night. In the morning, he'd build it up and then burn it down to a pile of coals. Then he'd place a block of wood on his head for protection. He'd fill a pot with the coals and place that on that block. And then he'd go through the village with a pair of tongs, giving coals to the women to start the morning's cook fires. Bless your enemy, and you make him a spreader of warmth. Too many of us have participated in the hatred and the harsh words that, 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 that just don't reflect the heart of our Lord. This can only spread and sustain conflict and hatred, not to mention failing to represent our Lord. That's not our calling. It would seem, in all of this, that too many of us, both on the left and on the right, unwittingly place our hope in a political system, a philosophy, or an outcome, rather than in the Lord. When we do that, we engage in a form of idolatry, anger, and forms of hatred and destruction inevitably result. There's no way they can't. That's what idolatry brings. In the same way that those things affected Israel, they affect us. Jesus alone is our hope. No matter who's in office, no matter what kind of government we live under, nothing changes for us in terms of our focus, our anointing, our task, or our calling. And so I grieve at the outcome of this midterm election, but even more, I grieve for the reasons for it. I know that we must take full responsibility for giving control of the House of Representatives to a party that supports the murder of unborn children and seems to abhor the actual rule of law in many areas of national life. 
We must redouble our prayers and make repentance and holiness a significant focus. Following the election, the election in 2016, I was given a vision of four sticks with the fourth stick bending. It represented four years of preparation with trouble of some kind unfolding in the middle of the fourth year. Well, later on, I realized that the middle of the fourth year coincides with the heat of the next presidential election cycle. The certainty of the fulfillment of that vision seems <laughs> more obvious to me now, although I still believe that through prayer, much can be turned. And seasons of preparation can be extended. God, help us. Many have prophesied that President Trump will win a second term. But prophecies like that are conditional upon a whole lot of things. One of those things turns on our prayers. And it, cha it turns on the, the change of tone that I'm pleading for. Because the mouth speaks from that which fills the heart. Changes of tone come from changes at the level of the heart. We need a move of true holiness. We need a move of repentance. We need a move of godly transformation of heart and spirit in this nation beginning with God's people. We in the body of Christ now live in a limited season of favor to adjust our focus to get serious about Jesus, to seek cleansing, and begin to look more like the Holy One we serve. Amen. Make me holy like you, that I may do.